Honestly, it took me years to get my landscape photography to that level of today. But when I break it down, there are five simple habits I got used to, which helped me massively to get a better photographer. In this video, I will tell you exactly which habits made me a better photographer and why. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. As I have an injury at my knee currently and already for some weeks now and I was chained to my office most of the time, I started a really interesting project. There will come an own video about that in some weeks, really interesting, but it brought me to go through my photographs over the last years again and also to reflect why I got a better photographer. And this was quite interesting for me because I found out that the most impact on my improvement was not what I thought. Of course, things like composition, light, even focusing techniques and so on really helped to improve. And I made already lots of videos about these topics. But what I was quite surprised about is that I got used to a couple of habits over the last years which made a big difference for me. And to be honest, if I had known these things earlier, it would have brought me much sooner to my next level of photography. And you know, I never make any secrets, I share everything with you here on my channel and that's the reason for this week's video. 5 habits to make you a better photographer. Well, tip number one has to do with something I mention already quite often in my videos and it is really, really that important. It's all about building a connection with mother nature and the best way to achieve this is by going out as often as possible. And this is my first tip for you, go out as often as possible. This is something I had to perceive particularly over the last weeks to be honest. Due to my insured knee, I was chained at home, I went out just very rarely and it even brought my inspiration totally down to be honest. But whenever I go out, it is amazing which effect the poor nature has to me. It is yeah, like, like magic if you want, really. Going out is the best source of inspiration I know. And that you don't get me wrong here, this tip is not all about location scouting. Location scouting is also important to find new places of course. But with being out I mean something totally different. I mean to be out without thinking about photography. Just to enjoy the nature, the mountains, the trees, the water, the landscape. Because whenever I'm out, yeah, maybe it's a kind of primary instinct if you want or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why or how it works, but it works. And usually I'm out multiple times a week. In winter maybe not as often than in other times of the year because most of my customer projects are in winter. But what I found out is it is much better to go out more often for a little time than just one time a week the whole day long. And usually I go out even with a camera. Yeah, I don't need a camera to get connected to mother nature, right? Sometimes I go out for a hike or just a walk with my wife maybe. And just to give you a rough idea, around 50% of the time I'm out is just for being out and connecting. 25% is location scouting, don't find new places for photography. And another 25% is photography and vlogging in my case. So that's how my time out in the nature is spread usually. Currently I'm far away from that through my knee obviously, but it is already much better and so I plan to do a kind of reboot soon and I'm super excited about that. And the first thing I will start with is definitely going out and connecting with mother nature as often as possible, what is tip number one. Well and tip number two is something what gave my creativity an amazing push and that is that simple. Just turn your phone off. But don't get me wrong here, a phone is an amazing tool for photography in the one hand. There exist so many useful apps. We can use a phone to look for the direction of the light or to predict the weather or to build up a composition and so on. And we should use it therefore. It is really such a useful tool. But there is a big but. Because in the other hand, a phone is also the biggest disturbing machine I've ever seen in my life. And there exist studies that we are much more creative when we are not disturbed by anything. 
Monks recognized this already a thousand years ago, for instance, that being not disturbed pushed the creativity amazingly. They retired to quiet places without anything what could disturb, and this went so far that they even took a vow of silence. The problem with the phone is, with the phone, we are always reachable. It could ring anytime and anyone could disturb your creative flow. So that's really a good tip. Turn off your phone whenever you don't need it. And this tip is not all about your phone only. Eliminate everything what could disturb you. Email, internet, social networks, and not while you are out for photography only, by the way. Turn off your phone and your computer whenever you don't need them. Well, tip number three is something what helped me massively to get much stronger compositions. And it is also really, really simple. And the tip is, let your camera in your bag. So what does this mean? Because we need our camera to photograph, obviously. Well, when we break it down, the camera is just a tool to capture. But photography is much more than capturing. Capturing is just the, the last 2% maybe. The most important thing about photography is the composition. This means when I'm out for photography, I keep my camera in my bag till I'm finished with my composition. So when I enter a location, I try to build up a composition. The one eye trick is really useful here. You have just to close one eye therefore to get rid of the three dimensions of our world and building up a rough composition. I think I mentioned this one eye trick a little bit more in detail in my video about how to find a composition. So I will link it up there for you so that you can watch it after this video. And the next step out on location is I grab my phone. Yes, it's really a good tool. We just have to know when we should use it and when we should turn it off. So I grab my phone and I build up the composition in detail. I mean, the display of a phone is usually much better than the display on a camera. And I'm a little bit more flexible as I don't have to think about things like lenses, depth of field or any other things like that. I find you my composition on my phone. And if I'm happy with the conditions, I take out my camera and go into setup. At this point, I'm already 100% finished with my composition and I just make the click. So letting my camera in my bag really helped me to get out better photographs. My friends, just for the case, if you should like this video, I'd be really happy if you could give me a thumb up. It is just one click for you, but it would really help me to get this video better ranked on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, tip number four is also really interesting. It helped me massively not to get rubbish photographs. To be honest, I didn't do this in the first 10 years of photography because yeah, in my, in my first years of photography, I just photographed on film because digital photography was simply not invented. But when it was invented, it was a revolution. So tip number four is, make a test shot out in the field. And I don't mean this kind of test shot where I go home and rethink my composition. This is also a really fantastic thing I can recommend you, but this was also already possible with film obviously. But with taking a test shot out in the field, checking if the photograph is technical okay, I got totally rid of getting rubbish photographs. I mean, I still get lots of average photographs. Not each photograph can be a masterpiece, obviously. But I don't get blurry photographs to dark photographs to bright photographs anymore. So what I do is simply, when I've gone into setup, I check if my depth of field is enough, if my photograph is sharp enough. For the case that you shouldn't know how to focus and where to focus in landscape photography to get out razor sharp photographs, I made already a video about focusing where I explain everything in detail. I will link it up there in the corner for you. I also check the histogram if there are no highlights burned out or no shadows too dark so that I finally get out the best possible exposure. For the case that I need any kind of motion blur at water scenes for instance, I also check my shutter speed if I need to get longer or shorter. I also use the test shot to do a last fine tuning on my composition, but usually I don't change more than maybe a few millimeters in any direction with my camera, really just fine tuning. And if everything works in my test shot, I just wait for the right timing and then I make the click. So this was tip number four, always take a test shot. Well, and tip number five has to do with a mistake I made for many years, but I think it had quite the biggest impact to my photography. Whenever I came home with a photograph, I ticked off the composition and even the entire spot. I accepted my results as they were. If it looked fine, it was fine. 
but if it was rubbish, I didn't go back and try it again because I thought the spot had been the problem. And yeah, the problem was not the spot, it was the photographer, me in that case. So tip number five is all about to return the locations and make it better. Sometimes I tweak the composition, sometimes I build up a totally new one, sometimes I wait for other conditions, other light, other weather. However, with returning to the location, I have the chance to get out a better photograph. First, I just returned to places where I was unhappy with my results, but then I found out that it is a quite good idea also to go back to places where I got out already really good photographs to make it even better or at least different. It is not all about getting everything better. Different could also be better, if this makes sense. And to be honest, since I started my YouTube channel, I didn't return that much to spots than I did before. Yeah, I think it is maybe one of these traps here on YouTube. You think you have always to present new places to the audience. But meanwhile, I'm totally convinced it is not all about the places itself, but much more about valuable photography tips. So I think I will return much more to known places in future as well to get out better photographs. Not all the time, of course, but sometimes it could be that I will return to an old place what could be interesting also for videos, I think. I hope this was useful for you, my friends. This week I will do a little bit more of rehabilitation for my knee and I hope that it will be possible to stretch it already slightly. Fingers crossed, therefore. Yeah, I fell down on a route with my heavy backpack and this is already five weeks ago. I had my vlogging camera exactly in that hand that had been able to catch myself at the incline. So I crashed onto a route, totally unbreak by the way, and this takes time. But with the time it gets better and better and I think with a little bit of luck, next week should be possible to try for my first smaller hike that is longer than 15 minutes and we will see. And of course I were really happy if you would join me here on YouTube when I will try my first steps when I go for rebooting my landscape photography. Don't forget to press the bell icon that you will not miss the video. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, I were really happy about a thumb up and very important, don't forget about your friends. Share this video on Facebook and Instagram. Give your friends also the chance to improve their photography with these simple tips. I thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see You are the artist I'll never be Stay with me and I have no doubt You'll make a painting that makes you proud